<laughs> Hi guys, Dr. Sammy here with Eastwood Animal Clinic. Appreciate y'all joining and hopefully these are useful videos for you. So we're addressing one of our other questions from one of our other media platforms. And the question is, why does my dog get skin tags and what can I do about them? It's a good question. We see a lot of skin tags on a lot of patients. Traditionally, they tend to be our older patients and don't know exactly why all patients get them, but there is something called a papilloma virus and that virus predisposes a lot of these guys to getting warts or pendulous warts. Skin tags would be another way. So, you know, not exactly sure which version this particular client was asking, whether they're actual warts or they're actual skin tags or the patient's getting both. Do we just have one or are they having multiple pop-up? The papillomavirus is a cause for reoccurring ones. Usually we see that a lot with warts, but a lot of these warts will get pendulous, so kind of teardrop shaped is a way of thinking about that, and they're kind of dangly and floppy. Most of those pendulous warts or masses have a lot of blood flow, so when they nick it on the corner of a cabinet, the corner of the wall, a play buddy, a play date, they chew on it. They tend to bleed a lot. <laughs> it's usually not a big deal. It's just a little messy and it can scare a lot of owners when they're not used to seeing a little bit of blood. But I live in that world and I deal with those things all the time, so I am used to seeing it. A lot of people never really see blood. So if they see it, it bleeds a lot. It's not usually something that I am super nervous about. Something easy you can do at home if they're doing that, just simply hold pressure on it. Hold pressure on it for about five minutes give your coagulation factors, give the body time to do what it does. Let it clot. Sometimes it does not clot. Sometimes it keeps bleeding. You can put a little bandage on it. I've had some other veterinarians suggest cornstarch. That's something that a lot of people have at home that can kind of help it clot a little bit. The reality is once they tend to start bleeding or they nick them, they usually always come back at some point in time. They nick it again, they play again. Whatever they did to cause it to bleed is usually repeatable. When they're repeatable, it's messy, it's a little dirty, it's annoying at home to have to clean up after it. You don't want to see it. Usually when it gets to that point, I tell clients it's time to just remove it. Every doctor will go about that a little different. If they're small enough, depending if we have one versus 10 or so, I'll try and go through local blocks or sedations as opposed to anesthesia to go get them. Other than that, I'm not really sure how you can prevent them from coming. We don't exactly know all the causes for why they come. Some of them probably an underlying genetic predisposition. Some people, as they get older, they never had little lumps and bumps. They get a nick, the body walls it off, and they just kind of get a little more lumpy bumpy. <laughs> as long as they're the right kind of lumps and bumps, we're good. <laughs> we don't want the cancer lumps and bumps. So just watch out for that. Hopefully that answers that question a little bit for you. The short answer is I usually ignore them, benign neglect, unless it's a problem or we're under anesthesia for something else like a routine dental, a spay, neuter. As long as the patient's stable, take them off while we're there. If they're not bleeding and the owner can tolerate them, I usually leave them alone. If they're annoying, owner doesn't like them, they're bleeding, causing an issue, they're growing, any red flags, Basically, just get them removed. So, all right guys, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Thanks for participating and keep posting those questions. We do look at them and then we go through them. So, thanks guys, bye.